Welcome to session number four. In this session, I will break down the nervous system and how the polyvagal theory from Stephen Porges has changed my perception of the nervous system. And if you want to know how the nervous system works, in this video, I show you exactly how I figured that out. It's a little bit of an explanation and let's dive straight in. Enjoy. Everything, and, and, and I say that with all determination, everything we do is a neurological state. Everything. If you sit here and listen, if you play, if you eat, if you sleep, if you have sex, if you shit, if you walk, everything is a neurological state. And my, my approach or my objection is that I can show you how to change that stages. Mm. But the main objection is how to find that stage where you can play and where this lovemaking dynamic is happening and that, that you really understand what that stage is and that it's accessible for you, easy. Yeah. Specifically when you are having a little relationship fight. <laughs> And you don't know where you are. Just like, oh, Jesus Christ, well, how did we end it up here? <laughs> <laughs> we love each other so much. <laughs> just like in still, just like <laughs> mammal kingdom. <laughs> uh, so there's so much more. Uh, you know, I just said that this morning um, to you, Christina, that the original form of this weekend was we were talking about let's do an entire week because... I have so much valuable stuff that you can go into and so so I just need to compress a lot here this weekend to make that accessible um, and I would like to have much more time and space everything that I know to put in so this, I, I really need to cherry pick the, the dynamics and what I do is I listen to you <laughs> I feel where you are and and try to figure out how can I just like put the best gold nuggets and diamonds in that, that you just get them out. And one thing that I picked up this morning um, that was a conversation that uh, you two had about, uh, or you three about um, uh, um, uh, re recovery, addiction, uh, and uh, getting sober. And another one I picked up about what pick, uh, fits perfectly in what I want to share about the neurodynamic of the uh, of orgasm at a show later. But then somebody talked, and I don't know who that was, about um, uh, a honeymoon. Yeah, I, I don't know. I picked it up somehow, somewhere. <laughs> but this this is the the idea of the honeymoon, and uh, and and in, in older traditions, the word of honeymoon. You when you in this deep in love space and you just you can't get enough of each other and you just choose energetically you just want to get married and you just want to spend the rest of your life and, and I love that state you know this is so beautiful that's the honeymoon period and the honeymoon period has been used in ancient traditions for couples to travel to wisdom keepers who were showing them how to go into that sexual sensual dynamics you know to, to show deeper layers of how to access all that. Yeah, so this is what the honeymoon was, and then kind of got hijacked through Christianity, mm. and then you get married, and then you travel to, I don't know, to a destination and go on, on holiday and just like spend tons of money. And <laughs> But the honeymoon period is that part to really discover, explore the depth of your capacity. Can I ask, sir? Yes. Mm. So you're saying that the honeymoon was actually somewhere where you, as a couple, it doesn't have to be in the, in the start of the relationship. It could have been maybe opposite in a time where it was difficult to sort of find new ways of being together. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so not getting stuck in the yeah. old way of kind of how we have been conditioned in society. This is how stuff works. And then the question, everybody loves honeymoon state and everybody would like to find us like, how can we maintain that? Like... How, how can we hold that space as long as possible, probably forever? And um, and of course, there's, there are challenges and there are growth edges and, and, and stuff is happening. But this is what the honeymoon literally is. So you're on a honeymoon. Mm -hmm. yeah? So you're, you, you come to learn something deeper about yourself and how to 
connect that and and well, Matt, Matt, I, that's I, your I, next retreat honeymoon <laughs> 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 I, 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 have, I, would, I have a belief in the magic of falling in love, which I'm in, right, in the state of high chemical elation and whatever. Yeah, I want to maintain it, but I just, I believe there's a possibility for it actually to get better. Right? The dynamic of motion, that mm. this could be the base, the honeymoon, mm. and yet he can elate to further levels mm-hmm. of bliss. Mm-hmm. And, and pleasure. Yes. So it's not maintenance, because in the dynamic system of, of motion, things never stay the same. Mm-hmm. No. They always move in one way yeah. or direction. So in, to, uh, to maintain it, you need to elate it in order to yeah. be maintained. Because yeah. That's the dynamic nature. Yes. It's it's, it's never stagnant. No. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's right. Yeah. But it's moving mm-hmm. in something. Yeah. Yes. So that which moves in, it has to stay the same. Yes. Well, what I'm just saying. It, the, the honeymoon could be the base. Could be it's the base. evolving. So it's evolving even to higher levels. Mm. So it's not maintaining, it's actually elating in that way. And all those chemicals are also <coughs> making us a little bit blind. Mm. So <coughs> we could like maintain that but still be able to see the whole truth yeah. of all of things because yeah. sometimes we are a bit blind in, in yeah. that yeah. rush that yeah. like chemistry, like yeah. wow. Yeah. Could you really be it just brings so me back to this consciousness. I, I believe for me, stress and looking around quote, makes me egocentric. So I'm looking out for the danger to protect myself based on my stress. When the stress level is neutralized, I mean a state of consciousness, then I'm in a state of expanded union. So it's no longer about me, it's me, I'm connected to others, yes. my beloved. And that is a change of consciousness where I'm removing that egocentric and I'm becoming mm-hmm. a state of union. Yeah. Right, and I think that is an exercise. Or you know, you used to call it play. I also can call it leveling up to play, but it's still stress there because I'm centered on my self survival, which is a you know natural. Response. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like we're also talking about two different things. Like one is the experience of falling in love that you might feel in the beginning like an experience you have for a couple of months let's say and the other thing you were saying was that when you because some people could call that the honeymoon I guess the experience of falling in love but what you're saying is that in the ancient traditions that's something you you, you go and do it's not about the sensual experience in the body right now okay. the first three months mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. there's something then. that you can do after a year and then you learn the deeper dynamic of yeah, yes yeah. this is like two different things yes and no yeah yeah so so th- i have been working with people who were madly in love in the honeymoon and then they just went into daily life thing and then they actually after years so it's just like okay ready to to um, split up and kind of move on and then I have this conversation about what I'm doing today uh, where people kind of drop out and then I ask the question so just like look back from this place where you were madly in love and would you like to reignite that if you could would you, because there was something really magical between you and your partner mm. If you could, would you reignite that? Would you restart that? And then, yeah, sure, I would. Okay, so then let's work. That's it's possible. Mm-hmm. So if you would have liked to get to know that when you were madly in love, you might would never have fallen out of this state, mm-hmm. and you could have elevated that yeah. from wherever you were mm-hmm. by choice. So, um, but then of course you you can choose it from that way. You know, on one point in your life, you just choose. Okay, I just want to tap into that I just, I just I just want to know what is that that has made me fall out of it mm. and when you know what it is then you can choose if you tap back in mm. yeah. Well, yes. Also, yes yeah it just it's a lot of work it takes work you need to be really conscious yes and yes. about it it's not like something that happens just naturally you know you need to be really conscious about yeah Hey, I'm working with this. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. 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 You water yourselves. Yeah. 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 You consciously water yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I guess the love is the somehow it's like being together and 
everything that happens because it happens in a relationship it's an adventure and if we see it as, oh I can discover more about mm -hmm. him and us mm -hmm. maybe it becomes more fun yeah. Yeah. <laughs> than oh I have to work Afterwards. Yeah, no. Oh. But it's of course, work, there but is work. work yeah, but it, it yeah. takes a little bit of effort, you know. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like, yeah. not bad way. It can be fun. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, have to be conscious. Just know that you're, like, you know, just kind of, it's like, <laughs> kind of, yeah. Mm. Kind of commitment. Way. Yeah, commitment. Okay, so um, I want to break down this neurological stages for you. So it's on a cognitive rational level, a high demand, what I'm going to show you. And um, uh, you, you have, some of you have seen that already and that might give you kind of a uh, remembering of that. Um, but this one, uh, is, I'm so happy about that. So I was studying the polyvagal theory with Stephen Porges. I just met him twice. I did workshop with him, so I just really went Can deep. Stephen Porges, Dr. Stephen Porges, is a neurophysiologist from US. He's a professor on neurophysiology, University in Illinois, and he and his wife, mm -hmm. Sue Carter, they have done massive deep research on the function of oxytocin and social engagement and proximity and connection. It's fantastic work. And this has been kind of going really deep in what I'm doing and it's in the book. And so what we did with the hands and all that and how mammals relate and how we bond, it's all based on this dynamics. This is fantastic work. So if you want to know more, this is definitely worth a study. And that's what I want. So, so I actually met him and I was sitting there like, oh my God, this is so complex. How the fuck? And then and, and I was sitting in, in London in a workshop with him and, and he sits in front of us, hundreds of people in the room and he had a, a kind of a big um, uh, uh, kind of projector uh, presentation. And and then I, 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 I saw this picture kind of just like, okay, this is how it works. And, but what I saw is he had one picture in the nervous system that was a not safe side, and then one picture that was a safe side of the nervous system and how they correlate. And then I, I saw them overlapping. I just saw that and they just were moving over. And I just like, okay, now I get it. I, I, just, I, I just clicked in and understood that. And I went on my computer that day and, and, and that was just when I started to draw with as a software uh, where you can do hand drawings and stuff and then I created a video out of that and it was like well this is uh, I'm so happy about that I created that I sent that to him this video and he said well this is genius so this is so good <laughs> so can you send me the software I want to create something like that and then we just like <laughs> communicated a little bit and and then he said there was just one little piece you need to change this is the word of the so-called freeze state um, oh, so freeze. the freezing state yeah. and that belongs somewhere else and beside that you know professor gave <laughs> a check that's like you get I was really excited about that and this is what I want to show you yeah. so this is a graph that is in the book I described that I have several videos on that on, on YouTube and uh, this TRE what we did this morning is is, is based on this thing so Porges and Bicelli they are connected and this stuff goes all together and it's just genius stuff ready for that yeah. I just make it short it takes 15 minutes or so and it is recorded <laughs> okay so and that's the reason why I just uh, normally like to do this exercise that we did in the morning because it just makes it more transparent and uh, okay let's do it so um, poly vagal theory. So there was the idea of when we are playing or when we're doing stuff that we either feel safe. Yeah. Or we feel not safe. Most of the time it's either or. And 
you know when you feel safe and when you're not feeling safe. And nobody can tell you, hey, you're totally safe here when you're not feeling safe. Yeah. Yeah, so this is absolutely individual differently and everybody has a different neurological wiring. So what is safe for one person can be lethal and vice versa. And you need to be sure about your own capacity. Yeah? And then there is a structure that calls um, uh, dysregulation. So when you're not safe, you're dysregulated. And then the question is the nervous system has the tendency always to go back into safety. Yeah? And going back into safety is either a structure of co-regulation, so you regulate with another person. Yeah? What is in infant state as a baby is touch and connection because it releases oxytocin and harmonizes your nervous system. Or it is self regulation and self-regulation is what we just did this morning you were on your own of course you had a little bit of guidance you start touching yourself you're feeling yourself you felt the object yesterday you felt when you do that something is changing in my chemistry in my body and i can self-regulate and i can drop into another state what makes you literally capable of engaging in a different way and there is one particular thing in there if people can't self-regulate so if they're dependent on co-regulation they have most of the time a caregiver in the past when they're grown up they couldn't self-regulate themselves and have used the baby or the ch uh, kid to co-regulate and that is an in, in, uh, inheritance in the nervous system that these people or these children learn that self-regulation is not existing and the only thing that exists is co-regulation and making themselves dependent on the state of the nervous system through another being. Mm. Yeah, does that land somewhere? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah? different okay. totally Completely different, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Co-regulation is good, so we all need to be capable of co-regulate and we all need to be capable of self-regulate. And we can learn to co-regulate through self-regulation, but you cannot learn to self-regulate through co-regulation. Yeah? We, so so co-regulation, you can not learn uh, no, no. self-regulation you cannot learn through co-regulation, but you can co-regulation through self-regulation. Mm -hmm. So you, have, you need to be capable of self-regulate first yes. to co-regulate with another person because then you can, co you can help other people to mm -hmm. co-regulate and self-regulate mm -hmm. because they don't make them dependent on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I've done a lot of this kind of work. <laughs> I call it in my programs, I go to self-soothing. Yeah. So like a big, big thing of learning. Yeah. Just to like hug myself, yeah. stroke and... Self-love, nice yes. 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 Like because as a grown human, <laughs> you like a single mom and nobody around and yeah. terrible things happening. You know, I had to learn to do this. I had never done it before. It was really hard first, but then I get used to it. Yeah. Yeah, so on the spiritual level, so that we did with the object, this is absolutely fantastic because I said that to you this morning, when you touch the ground, when you shake, you recognize that the entire earth is a big object and then yeah. the mother is not your physical mother in the past. This big object is mother earth. It's yeah. just like you, you self-regulate and co-regulate with the earth, with this vibration. Okay. I, I, I can share so much more in this direction and I just really need to bite my tongue because there's so much in there. <laughs> um, so, and I just want to make it concise and understandable. <laughs> so, um, when we're born, it's true. Yeah? When we're born, there's either sympathetic or parasympathetic. Yeah? Sympathetic is... Uh, we, we scream and we um, shout and we, uh, we are loud and we just go in this thing and we, it's survive when we're born. Yeah? 
and it's it's that that means sympathetic in 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 the state of an infant is literally sympathetic is lethal yeah and then you have parasympathetic what is in terms of medical understanding the relaxation and the ease and and and, and you're sleeping and you're resting and you're just good yeah this is the old understanding of the nervous system parasympathetic parasympathetic and sympathetic and this thing was I was trying to understand them my entire life and it's true when you're born and the rest is that you can totally forget it uh, because it doesn't make any sense so because the entire thing of the polyvagal theory comes from one part and that's the so-called vagus nerve activity what is so-called a ventral vagus, ventral parasympathetic. And this um, vagus, and, um, or ventral vagus, this is what we develop from the first year of existing, and we never learn more than in our entire life than in this first year, is developing our personality and our social engagement system. I'll just write that here. This is social, I don't know, was a C in English? Is that right? Okay, and it was a Z in German. Um, so, so the social engagement system, and this is parasympathetic, and this is the way how we see the world. This is the way how we detect, like in this game, danger or safety. Yeah? And something called neuroception that takes a split of a second that lets you know you're safe or you're not safe. This is not by your rational mind. It's your neuroception, your social engagement is detecting that. Involuntary. Yeah? You can train that. And practice a lot of stuff but this is the thing and this is based on the release of oxytocin in the first year of existence eye contact physical touch that what we did with the object feeling loving bonding this is developing the social engagement system through your entire life and that's getting compromised in your entire life yeah? because there are situations where you're not safe and life, there is no safety existing in life. Life is by definition not safe. <coughs> so, I want to go here first on the not safe side. And this is um, important to notice because if you are think that this is something wrong here and there's something not, not good or right, then um, I would rather invite you to rethink that. So social engagement system is detecting something is, is, is safe or not safe. Then it calls the so-called triune autonomic nervous system. It goes in three steps. So this is the first step, social engagement. What we do here together, yeah? we are social with each other. We have eye contact, we talk, we look into each other's face, we just smile and just love each other. We carry our heart in our face and express that generally <laughs> yeah and then something something <laughs> happens that keeps us out of this regulation some somebody says something or somebody looks in a certain way or something is wrong something's getting triggered from the past that reminds you to something where you had an accident or a traumatic experience and then <coughs> something comes in that feels dangerous yeah and the nervous system goes from social into um, the not safe side of the nervous system. What is the, the fight, fight or flight response? Yeah. So danger and fight, flight is just like you are that either just like, okay, I just need to go <laughs> and you're out or you just like start to get kind of aggressive and need to fight and protect and defense. And that can be anything. So I'm, I'm, I'm not individualizing that, I just generalize it more in human behavior. So it can be anything that is based on this dynamic. Uh, freeze is not in there? Wait, this was okay. Stephen Paul just said that to me. I put freeze in there, and that was my mistake too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this one is sympathetic. Sympa, yeah, and in sympathetic is uh, you just 
fight flight in a not safe side. You're just better out here. Yeah? And if you can't run away, if you can't get in a, in a state of safety through one of these, getting back into social or communicate or bond or talk with people, the nervous system goes into the so-called um, shut down. Yeah? And between fight and flight and shut down, there is a kind of a state here. This is where the free state is happening. Yeah, so the free state is we are either in fight or flight, so we have like one foot f full on the, br on the accelerator, yeah, on the gas, kind of trying to get out of thing, and have the other foot on the brake at the same time. Mm. Yeah? And this is what the free state is, it's just like the deer in the spotlight. Mm. It's, it's, it's trying to hide. But it's just ready to jump and to do that. And what happens when you do that strong enough and you stay in this place, and let us do that intentionally because it is a really important state on the other side. When you just do that, you will just like <laughs> collapse and then you just down. Yeah. yeah. And that is here a life a life threat. You, you know, you get numb, so you can't feel anything. It's a survival mechanism for one reason, like the mouse being catched by the cat is being dead, like the opossum, that the predator is losing the interests, that the mouse may have a chance to survive. So this is all a built-in mechanism on different levels that we all have, that we need to have to survive. Yeah? So we can be so madly in love as much as we want and we can enjoy the life and the beauty of it. If a car crashes or something is happening, you will be, if you want that or not, you will be out of that space and you need your survival mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Do I? Yeah, yeah. It, it, to not make it so like big, I'll just take it to a conflict with, for example, with my partner. And I just want to see if it's, if I get to the free state. So for example, we get into conflict and I tell my boyfriend he cannot run away. He has to stay with me with this feeling. Yeah. And uh, he stays. It's very difficult for him. And then, but what happens is then he, in, to survive this state, he becomes very cold. And it feels like a huge layer of uh, armor that I have to uh, go through to find him again. This, it, you could call it stages of dissociation. Yeah, and we all have that to survive and we all keep that because we all need to reinvent ourselves and be functional and then we bring states of dissociation into social, in connection and this is where we have the blind spots so where we don't know how to be with certain behaviors because this is something, this is just unconscious. Yeah. But, yeah. So close the door here. My new reception is detecting something. <laughs> Yeah, so um, this is not wrong or bad. So it's nothing that is, is, is broken or needs to be fixed or anything. We all need that, we all have that because we are mammals and in this form of our social dynamics and social engagement, you know, we need that nervous system. Yes. I understand if there's a crisis, you need it. Yes. As a life-threatening thing, yes. you need it. Yes. But, but I get yes. free state in yeah, conflict in certain areas, and I can't think. Everything is said to me. I'm just it's like you could be speaking a language I don't understand, and I go to fetal position. It's just out. Yes. So, and there is not life-threatening situation. It's just. So, yeah, yeah. So that's not helpful then. No, that's, that's true. If you don't have conscious access to this state, mm. um, the first step that I normally recommend is uh, acknowledging that as a resourceful state that you have developed on one point in your life to survive and you have taken that yeah. somehow with you yeah. and that you um, can acknowledge that as a resourceful state yeah. in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm starting to 
I yeah. know when it happened, but it's still hard. Yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what I want to say. Without that, life would not happening. Mm -hmm. This is really important for humanity, for mammals to evolve and to uh, um, grow and thrive because this is where we learn in life where stuff goes wrong and then we just know okay the next time I need to do something different mm -hmm. yeah, so it's, it's imp this is a big learning school of life otherwise if we wouldn't have that humanity would not have developed where it is today I don't know if that's good <laughs> but, but this is definitely how it is <laughs> We, we might capable of just like getting more <laughs> on the other side in, in, in life and just like seeing that as resourceful in, in one way or the other. So now the safe side, this is the side where the honeymoon and the beauty and love and you know all this openness and the sweetness and everything is happening. And there is um, between social and uh, no, no, write that down first. Sorry, I forgot something. This one here is para sympathetic, and the vagus nerve here is as well parasympathetic. Yeah. So we have two parasympathetics. One is the so-called dorsal, yeah, dorsal, and the vagus sympathetic is ventral. Is this the same nerve thread? It's the same nerve. So now I come back to what I said yesterday. This one here, the social and the ventral parasympathetic, is this fat myelation mm -hmm. from the upper diaphragm on all organs. Mm -hmm. yeah? Your social engagement system, your facial expression, the way how you hear, feel, see, smell, speak. Mm -hmm. is, is the social connection is all the ventral vagus, the social connection to feeling and being in proximity with other people because this is where you detect safety and connection. Yeah. The dorsal one, this one down here, is connected, it, it's connected to your brainstem activity. It's involuntary. It just lets your heart beat, your breath. You know, when you sleep, you don't die. So it's literally the, the when you see it in computer dynamics, the the DOS system, you know, just, it, it runs under, the, is, is, is the starting thing in the software uh, of the operation system. And then you put the operation system on top of that, and then you have different softwares you play on there. So this is the same thing. So the parasympathetic dorsal is connected to all organs and is this part that makes you shut down when you're not safe. There are different ways of training that. Yeah, so that you have access to that. Um, firefighters, police, soldiers who have, you know, they, this is what they do, they train that. And, 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 but, you know, as a lover, that's not so needed. <laughs> Even in field sometimes, this is lethal, fuck, I just die. Mm -hmm. but it's, climbers. Oh, cl climbers. Very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had this experience. I was climbing and I was, I was freezing on a rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I was actually, f I was crying of fear on the rock, five meters high. <laughs> My girlfriend was up there at 20 meters. So when are you coming? Just like, oh, <laughs> let me down. <laughs> and, then, and, and then I kind of was like, okay. And what got me out of that state was accessing my anger. And through my anger, so this is this is what sympathetic is. Through my anger, I could just like, okay, what? I never do that again. I hate that. <laughs> and, and I made it. It was horrible. You <laughs> I, again? Five times, and then I quit. That was just... <laughs> it's really interesting you saying yeah. this with anger. It is because it seems so bad, and it's such an amazing thing sometimes. Yes, because. The anger keeps you, so the anger is part of the free state. It's this, oh, this ready for, 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 for fighting or for running. But it's just like there is this, this, this fear of shutdown. Because when you shut down, you're just, uh, you're just ready to be. You, you, we die through our nervous system through this one here. 
you know, this is the part, last, last heartbeat and last breath, we die through this one. And if we are afraid of this shutdown, then the only thing that keeps us alive is anger, because we're, we're afraid of, okay, uh, that's, that's what can I do, I can't do anything, just like have it. Yeah? Okay, so uh, speeding things up. So then on the safe side, the same sympathetic nervous system. Should it be orange? Or? No, 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 it's green because it's differently. Safe. Yeah, so, so on the safe side, the same sympathetic, <laughs> sympathetic, <laughs> sympathetic nervous system called here mobilization. And mobilization, the sympathetic, is so needed. So a few examples of mobilization in the safe state, please. Dancing. Dancing. Yoga. Yoga. <coughs> Playing. Playing and Breathing. Yeah, yeah, no. Br breathing happens everywhere except here. <laughs> Is it like, I don't know, martial arts? Or like yes, yeah, sports, sports, any kind of sports. So activity movement? Yeah. Yes. With communication? Or yes, with so, 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 so you, you can every, do hear everything at the same time. Yeah. So you, you can run, hey, isn't that interesting? <laughs> but when you hear, you run just like you can't think, this part of the brain switches off and you just <laughs> go on. But in this case, you can just run and just, <laughs> yeah, I didn't want you to tell you, that was really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you, you put love making on that side? Say again? Love making. Yes, love making, mm -hmm. sex, mm -hmm. pleasure. So there's a hybrid state, and that hybrid state happens between social and mobilization. And this hybrid state here, this hybrid state, this is where play, um, sex, and sensuality, sensuality is happening. Yeah? And that's not accessible in any other part of the nervous system. Mm. So you need to be safe enough, you need to be capable of communicating, you need to be capable of accessing your mobilization without thinking it's fight or flight or it's dangerous. And, um, and so on and so on. <laughs> yeah? Okay. So then you are, you know, we have not done that yet, but um, we might. Uh, you just go into this mobilization and you just love to get physical. You just dance and, or you have sex like crazy or you just like do whatever you like. It's so good for the body to go into this activity and movement. It's so healthy. It's so good. The body needs and loves to exhaust itself. It's so healthy. You, know, you have all this adrenaline and all this other stuff pumping through your veins and it's just like, I am alive. It's Your girlfriend was when you were climbing. <laughs> yeah, she was just like, yeah, I was just like, no. <laughs> I'm wimping down your body. But, but she, had, she just had fun, you know. But I could not access that. So, so this is important to understand mobilization, sympathetic, but safe. So then when you exhaust yourself. But it's actually everything you do in life. It could be uh, work. renovating. Work, uh, renovating. Ex you know, we have in German a saying, we are here at work and not on a flight. Mm -hmm. But most people work as if they are on the survival thing and on a flight because they have depth or they have kind of, um, you know, they're in duty to something and then they just need to do that or they need to pay whatever yeah. mortgage. And, and then, then, there, then there is no work, there is no joy in mobilization. They just hate every little movement they do and they're just like oh, sluggish and I can't do it at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Or also when too much stress is coming in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When, when, when too much stress comes in. So, so now and then mobilization, you exhaust yourself and then you go here into immobilization. 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 Is that immobilization? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And this is the state where this edging part is happening, this, the, 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 the space of infinity. This is the space of expansion, peace. It is interpersonal. It's the transformative state. It's, I call that the bliss state. And this bliss state is extremely vulnerable. Yeah. It, it's Why? because it's the same parasympathetic nervous system like the freeze and this and, and the shutdown uh, after the freeze the shutdown state and it's literally to the body if you if you have difficulties with safety or not safety it can be a lethal state so people have that in yoga for example if they can't drop into um, uh, shivasana into this space of, because they constantly have to be mobile because they are afraid if they're not mobile in a way that they drop into this place and then they feel they die mm. so it's literally this is when you just look into and this is so fascinating this this is where stuff started to just come together for me when you look into um, Advaita Vedanta so um, Ramana Maharshi and uh, Papaji here this thing of uh, oneness. This is this is the state of you know uh, infinity. This is how you drop into that. Where you actually in love making when you drop into that space, it's just like there is no there is no I here. Yeah. yeah, I I don't exist. There's nothing to protect or to defend. There's nothing to there's there's nothing to fight for. It's just like absolutely, you know, we have this space where we're dropping into this just like. In eye contact, just like this is just oneness. Yeah, and the only word that I can express in that state is "I die, I die here." Okay, I die here, and and then I just die, and it, and, and that's like, and when I say those words, they are so true. Mm. I mean, I die, mm. uh, and and that is what it is. <laughs> and, I but die. it's a very yeah yeah it's yeah. a very beautiful it's e death. it's ego death there <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. 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 If you define yourself as an ego, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Whatever I, I is. An ego. No, no. Yeah. But it's uh, yeah. It's it's just. But yeah. I, I understand. Yeah. You know. yeah. So I mean, I had that. I had that a few times. You know, this state. I just found that by coincidence a few times, and I was just. I was so in awe. And I don't know what it was, and I asked different tantric or spiritual teacher about that, and and then I explained that just how do I find that. And then, yeah, practice, practice, practice. Yeah, but what do I practice? What is it that we do here? What is it exactly? What's the pathway? Where do we go? And just like, yeah, just like hang around for a few decades. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so this this bliss state, um, and I had that f a, a few times. This it's it's literally death. I I don't know how many times I died in there. And I, I, I saw a podcast about the dynamic of death and the understanding uh, of, of, of death and orgasm. And, and that's just my experience. And I, I don't know if it's right or wrong. And you have to find it yourself. Um, I, had, I, had, I had fear of dying, yeah? fear of death. Mm. And I was afraid still when I just in, in shutdown, I'm, st I'm still kind of scared there sometimes and the and the fear of death um i had that here in the bliss state that i was just like so ecstatic and orgasmic that i was afraid of dying of orgasm my orgasmic state was so expand and so massive so it's like okay i'm going to die here and then i was thinking okay you know there was this last thought just like okay i i only i can do is I trust that this form is not built in this ecstatic blissful state as an as an orgasmic being that I could die of orgasm and I was like okay let's if I can die of orgasm then I just want to die on, a, on in an orgasm that's what I've been saying <laughs> I say it's a joke I'm, I'm gonna die with an OD and they go, oh, I say no orgasmic death <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, but um, were you ready? Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I, I just have a question. Yeah. Uh, because it, it's very, very, very interesting to see it like this. But I find that bliss and oneness is not the same thing. No. It's the, 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 the bliss is a state before the oneness. Yeah, the, the, the oneness is this infinite peace. Yeah, it's nothing. It's, there's nothing there. It's just com it's just yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. But but this is still a neological state. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um so uh and then I just saw a podcast and, and if I don't know if you have seen this on Netflix, uh, Midnight Gospel. No? Oh. There's there's one episode about death. And this midnight gospel, this piece about death, so it, it's it's made from 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 somebody who um, is doing podcasts with with real spiritual teacher, and then out of that podcast, he is creating a like a comic series or that that's so surreal, but it's so good. And this episode is about somebody who has been researching death through his entire life and the development of death in our Western society and how we perceive death and, and how we death have been inherited through, through, you know, how we have to relate with death and the fear of death. And he said on one point, and I was watching and I got really scared, just like, oh my God, this sounds horrible. But then it switches at the end of the episode where he talks about that. That's like in his experience as a spiritual path, death is orgasm. And we are so conditioned through mm. society that death and orgasm has been kind of separated mm. so wrongly and that we are so conditioned that sex is only existing in form of procreation to create more of us, to be literally under the umbrella of, of the religion in the society we live on, creating more little sheep to pay taxes. <laughs> and I was just like, what the fuck? How was he was just saying? <laughs> So, so this is just my opinion. Please take it, take it seriously. You just have to find your own truth in that. This is just my truth. And um, so the interesting thing is here about the nervous system that everything is a state that can change from one state into another state. That happens between the bubbles here. That happens as well between the bubbles here and that happens as well between the bubbles here yeah so all neurological stages there's a thing you can't go on this side at least you can't go from parasympathetic dorsal into a social dorsal by bypassing sympathetic so they call that the uh, the virgil uh, virgil break and the Virgil break means just like to go from that state into back into social, you need to shake or need to do something, you need to move, you need to scream, you need to shout, you need to access all your emotional stuff, all feelings, anger, sadness, grief, blame, shame, all, all this kind of stuff. So, so if you can't feel that, there's no social possible. So Matt, what comes to me in my reading is that this is a, could be a possible, not a, a flick, flick switch approach. It could be a dynamic one. It's, it's, yeah. There is a, a condition response in this one called the adaptive stress response. This one? Meaning, yes. Mm -hmm. Meaning if I encounter a stress mm -hmm. and I'm conscious, I have my nervous system is adaptive. In other words, the same amount of stress, right, I get adapted to that stress so I, I, the next time that stress I'm encountering, I don't respond with that intensity yeah. because my system has adapted yeah. right, to yes. a degree to that stress. You understand? Yes. But there is a condition on it because they've done experiments that people who take inter um, external drugs, medication, alcohol, they don't get that adaptation. Yeah. So when you take the drug away, and they encounter the same stress, the no. they respond to it like it's the first time. Yeah, There's yeah. no adaptive yeah. stress to yeah. that environment, yeah. Yeah. which points to me how pharmaceuticals, mm. right, they have a coping mechanism, but it doesn't allow the, the nervous system to update mm. itself to that stress response. Yes. So there is a learning 
dynamics here. It's not that stress and counter, if you get in the same stress and you respond, you practice it. The, the, there is a response. Your, 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 learn, your nervous system is updating itself yes. to lessen the response as an adaptive yes. situation. So you're saying that no medication, I mean, I used to work in psychiatry. All medication. So you're saying, because like, we used to have, uh, I used to work in the, in the acute most acute ward when people come when they're in Hackney where they would come when they were like really really delusional and psychotic and we had to give them antipsychotic I'm not saying I'm pro or not pro but because they were in a place where they were very aggressive so we gave them antipsychotic to calm down so they would not learn the responses actually on the antipsychotic it mm. has to be done, taken off that yeah. and encounter yeah. the situations in order to learn how to handle it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah because yeah. it's chemical. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's yeah. Chemical yeah. Not that makes sense. Either. Yeah. Um, so, an, an, an important piece is, and this is part of that, you might have heard about the window of tolerance or the window of equilibrium. Mm. It's, it, this is when you are, if you would live your life just only on this side of the nervous system, there's nothing happening. There's no development. You probably become a veggie and just like, yeah. just like whatever. <laughs> yeah. So the, the important, <laughs> the, yeah. It's, it's so true because if you have no trauma, nothing happening, it's kind of you get kind of square. Yes. You don't have any depth, really. But it's like no. the parents want to do to the kids. And this, yes. No, yeah, that's. This is what people are trying to do. Not yes. to have a trauma child, not go into difficult yeah. situations. Have a trauma. Uh, Surround them with cotton. Curling. Yeah, so, so the, the idea behind that is, is the same with um, uh, 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 flower sex. It's just all sweet and nice and lovely. It's like, okay, yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah, good. Just like, just bring it fucking on. <laughs> yeah. So that, that means just like you have one foot on the safe side and then you need to be capable of going outside out of your comfort zone and that means you have to allow yourself to go either hyper or hypo that means just like you just have to just be just like some so, somehow playing with some discomfort or danger or something that you know that's kind of maybe with pain or with bdsm or with power dynamics or whatever or kind of to have a different way of development. And, but that is individually different. So nobody can tell you what's your gig, what's your... Uh, 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 yes, <laughs> where, where are you with your stuff? You know that. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes there is this hidden treasure in us that, that we never dare to do in our life, that we are well afraid of. So that means as long as you have one place here where you can make choices about this, what is happening, and going into the safe, or, uh, into the unsafe or the dangerous place, everything is good, you know. But if you have both food, feet only in the safe side, it's just like, yeah, whatever. Uh, but if you have one foot in and you play around and you're not conscious and aware with what's happening, mm -hmm. and you take that safe leg and put that over there, it can feel a life threat and dangerous and yeah. sexuality can become kind of just like negative or yeah. wrong or bad or lethal or, or whatever you know so so it just needs some level of awareness around being in that state because the orgasmic state can feel dying it can feel lethal so this is very the the, the most vulnerable place because it is that place well, you know, um, it's, you know, in reproduction in nature, this is the vulnerable place when animal reproduce, this is the place where they can be eaten. This is the place where they are not protective because they can't reproduce if they are protective. You can't reproduce if you're protective and defensive. So you, so you can't access this state if you're here. So pleasure is not... Pleasure, so sensual, sensual pleasure. Pleasure is only happening here in this, in this hybrid state. So and to f fix that up, Why you, do you call it hybrid? Uh, it's hybrid is one and the other. 
like a car that is electric and has an engine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this has both social, so vagus, parasympathetic, and mobilization, sympathetic. It's a very rare state in the nervous system. And when I found that, you know, in the book from Stephen Porges about the polyvagal theory, that was, I, I relearned and re understood what play is. I was thinking, you know, I played my brain out with my children playing something to entertain them, and I just totally lost the sense of play. And then I just found it back, and you know, I have my own play. I have my own joy of play, and you have your own joy of play, and whatever that is for you is yours, your, your play. It's vital to play, the way how you love to play. So, this arrows are neurological changes and shifts, so you can easily shift from here to this one mm -hmm. with no doubt, like a finger snip, mm -hmm. but you cannot go from here to there, it's impossible. The nervous system is not, not wired that way, it's because of the social engagement and the, the, the feedback loops. You can go from here, there, easily, but you cannot go back from fight flight under that state. It's impossible. It always has to go over social and connection and mobilization. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so what, what can you say about that in terms of lovemaking sex? Yeah? No, and the mobilization. Yeah? How, what would you say about kink, where people have been tied up, strangulated, pain, mm. as an activity to, to stimulate the other side in order for greater enjoyment? Um, I think this is another conversation, but I can just like put it in a, in a, in a short um, frame. So this, this is my experience, my exploration in the King scene and in the, in the BDSM scene. Um, there is a lot of, uh, um, oh God, no, there's a word missing here. Th there are a lot of dynamics going on. The, a f fetish is a word. Uh, so that creates fetish. And the a fetish, a fetish. Yeah, the fetish is when you just have a king, something that turns you on, a fantasy, um, that can go into a really deep layer of perversion. When you look for gratification and satisfaction, when you use the dopamine pathway. Because the dopamine pathway is kind of in the reward center so entwined when you satisfy the, the, the kink and the perversion with the gratification, it creates a neurological pattern that the next time you need more to satisfy that. And that works with a, the with a dopamine receptors that you need more dopamine receptors. This is how all addictions work. You just need more input to fire the same amount of dopamine receptors to get that level of satisfaction. And the dopamine receptors die off, and that's the reason why you need more. And then you think you just have more satisfaction and more development. What might end up on one place here for a split of a second when people drop out. And then you can say, if they do that for gratification, <coughs> in French it calls so what is climaxing or orgasm? In French, it's called le petit mois, the little death. Yeah? And the little death is literally this point of gratification where you need more input to have the same amount of satisfaction. What's gratification in Swedish? Uh, yeah. Oh, they're really the best. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to play there, but I just want to talk more um, later on, not about the dopamine satisfaction pathway, I just want to talk more about what I call the serotonin pathway. And the serotonin pathway is oxytocin based, and it's based on that, what we did with the object, on feeling and touch and connection, where you can bring, of course, dopamine-related dynamics and excitement and stuff in there, but it's not based on it, it's just more like the, just, it's a component of it. So would you throw in with fetishness, shibari? 
I, I've heard therapeutic people saying it has therapeutic. It has, it has. It, it's, uh, you know, with consciousness and with awareness, and I've seen, I've seen Shibari art forms. Yeah. People do that. It's fantastic and beautiful. Yeah. I can't make a, even a simple knot, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can't do it. But I've seen people that are just masters, and it's so beautiful to see and to observe. And they are, f they, they are aware. And when I sit next to it, I just bliss out because I see what they, the art they can do. Because yeah, I'm really interested in something you were talking in there, because you were saying that from the immobilization you can go to sh shut down, but you can't go the other way. So if it's okay for my brain, I need like a concrete example. Concrete, if you could use a concrete so, and explain maybe. I, I can't explain oh, okay. why that is. Uh, but, but an example is when you're in Shivasana yeah. and you lay down and just like just merge with the earth and everything is good and then all of a sudden somebody is coming in and just like ah, da, da, and just like screaming around and you just you, you just you're just out of it and, but you're not here you just go maybe up here and then just like you just like it's just <laughs> open up your eyes shut the fuck up and get out of here and just uh, yeah, uh, yes it's, it's very sensitive and then you just try to lay down and lay back and just try to get oh, in it's just like okay. no just like no my down the state is gone and then you just and then you need to find another person to socialize and share just like oh my god i was just laying there and that was just horrible but could that not happen with yourself because i feel that i can do that social thing with myself i don't have to talk to another person. yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. either you co-regulate or you self-regulate yeah. but you have to go through this yeah, emotional yeah. state just yeah. like just uh, and then you can come back so it's it's a loop yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. okay so there's two more things uh, between mobile and fight flight, you this can. This was its 15 minute version. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how long it was, I have no idea. <laughs> I just tried to shorten it down every time. It's so interesting, it's impossible to do it. It's like a, a sport or something, or just like you're just in loving or something intensely, and then you just hurt the other one, and something's happening, and they go, ah, ah, ah what's, what's that? And then just like, what it needs in is an, an, an immediately reparation. I'm sorry, I'm oh, sorry, I, I'm not about to hurt you. Or, you know, you just repair if there is an accident in sport or something. And if there is no reparation, this will stay, you know, if, if, yeah. if people don't repair there. But then if it's repaired, you can go straight back. Yeah. Mm, that's, mm. I just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because it, that state wouldn't be on there, but I'm just thinking of what, and maybe that you would call that self-regulation while it's happening, because I feel that there can be within me at the same time as, let's, let's say I'm in this uh, stressful moment, but I can take myself into watching the stressful moment and not, yes, I can feel it, but it doesn't have to be only me. Uh, it's, so then I would be in both places at the same time. This one or? Uh, yeah, I don't know what you would call that because I would. It's like I can be in a conflict and I can yeah. feel all the feelings and I can see my human being in there, but at the same time I can be outside of it and mm. sort of watch it. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, I can. Uh, I the, the, there's a story around that. Um, it's, it's, it's a guy who was in Africa on a safari and got uh, uh, caught by a lion. And, and the lion was just like grabbing him and just like, and, and, and he noticed he, he, got, he got limb shut down, but he was fully aware of the entire thing. And, and he couldn't feel anything, there was no pain. And the, and the lion was just like grabbing him and just, just somewhere into the bush or something like that. And he just like, and said that was the most beautiful state. He was just totally aware of everything. It's like, I'm ready to die, I'm ready to go. And, was through the, and the lion was kind of, <laughs> ready having lunch and then s somehow they kind of shot the line and rescued him and he survived and he has full access about this state so he, wow. he was fully aware of that and, and, and conscious about that and there are many people who have similar experiences and I guess specifically practice um, yoga or meditation and stuff a lot opens up that space and you know meditation teacher like Ram Das and other and, and Ramana and uh, say just that well this is what is meditation for when you mm -hmm. when you're in the death state mm -hmm. you just actually stay open and let death happen and mm -hmm. the worst thing happens is an orgasm you are dissolving into orgasm mm -hmm. saying that <laughs> to rub it up 
the little death, le petit mois, the climax, the orgasm, I show later, maybe before lunch. We'll see how this goes in the next hour and a half. Um, the, the petit mois has a specific impact on that state. Yeah? And the invitation, and this is what the orgasmic blueprint is all about, is not le petit mois, the little death, is le grand moi, the grand death. That means just like this state of just like dying into oneness here, dying into this orgasmic state. And what that needs is to some degree specifically for men as well for women in this regard in teaming up with each other. So the teamwork is um, making a choice what your sexuality is about. Is the sexuality about procreation? Is the sexuality about recreation? So fun and play, what is okay only? Or rejuvenation? Is it health? Is it connection? Is it the yoga path? Or is it even the spiritual path? And I'll talk more about the spiritual path and the release of DMT and all this neurotransmitter. When you can stay here for about half an hour or longer because this is where this is opening up the door. And it won't happen if you're not there for half an hour. The world world average is literally seven and a half minutes. And I swear I could do it under 30 seconds. <laughs> Does it require aging from both parts in that state? What do you think? Yeah, I would definitely say that. But it's, it's a little bit different. You would probably speak about that later. But um, yeah. Uh, well, that's an interesting part because Machachia in his books talks about the women's orgasm mm -hmm. as, as it's the man's retention. Because the woman yeah. doesn't lose the energy like a man does only during menstruation, yeah. he claims, oh. that she loses, because the ovulation period, that she loses that energy. But in the sexual union, she, she doesn't lose it. So the focus is on the man for retention, mm -hmm. but not for the woman. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I have, I, I have similar experiences, specifically when the orgasmic state is opening up. I, uh, sounds maybe harsh, I intentionally sacrifice <laughs> It sounds a little bit Martha-like, but I sacrifice my ejaculation, my orgasm. I learn to stay before the climax, the point of no return. Because the state I can access and enter when Jessica goes into an orgasmic state, that I can, through this being with her, riding that wave that comes through her, I cannot access that on my own. It's impossible. I can have glimpses of that, but you, you are the... As a male, or as a male, yeah. So, so you need to let go the reproductive, addictive circle of the reward center, the dopamine, the dopamine related satisfaction, gratification, the little death. Little death. Oh, okay. That's I mean, yeah. And in, in my experience, I mean, we we do both. I mean, you when you tell when he allows me to come, <laughs> he's like, okay, now you can like he loves me, and then I was like, oh my god, this is I'm allowed to, and then it's like. Uh, I mean, that could be amazing and, and I don't lose the energy and it can continue and it's like so beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I will still say that it's a little bit like, because the human part of us, it's like a little bit about the orgasm then instead mm -hmm. of the, if I'm not really going there, mm -hmm. then it's just expansion, expansion, yeah. expansion, 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 expansion. And, and the orgasm is so beautiful, it can continue and everything. Mm -hmm. But it is a little bit of the, um, oh, it's so hard to put words on that, but it's like uh, the dying is not in the climax. The dying is that this will never end. Mm -hmm. This is just bigger, 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 bigger for me. That's the only way I can put words on it. And that's a little bit in the etching. But it's not nothing wrong. Or, I mean, it's easier for the woman, of course, to climax. Well, mm. Depending on how you do it, if you don't just do a clip wrap or something, mm. that's, yeah. then you lose your energy, I would say. But I don't know how you mm. do it, but that would definitely lose mm. a lot. Yes, so there's so much more to say about that. And I want to 
And, and you said Mandak Chia because it reminds me to that what I want to talk about and specifically in the de-armoring training we talk about that when we share about male anatomy is Mandak Chia has, he, he's the grand master for, uh, of not for no reason so he has obviously mastered the art to some degree but there's a misconception in his work that I've seen and many other tantric practitioner who have criticized that as well and he has kind of tried to repair that but it has been in the book and you can't re-edit that out that he was saying specifically for male to practice that is in the mula bandha the contraction of the pelvic floor and the and, and, and the anus mm -hmm. to, to control uh, ejaculation and uh, the uh, erection and all that and, and 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 the contraction is a sympathetic response in the nervous system and when you do that as a man when you try to control the control with a control you literally amplify that what you want to avoid and that's the ejaculation so Contraction and sympathetic does not work because ejaculation and the release of uh, semen is a sympathetic response, and the key is relaxation and expansion and, and and finding that place of no control. This is the hardest thing to learn for a man, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit like in dancing tango or learning tango. You know, being led is easy, but being the leader and just like feeling everything and being with the energy and, and being in present and holding the presence and just like, it's, it's tough sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the, the, well, yeah, so, so from a definition, so it's either having an orgasm or having a climax or becoming orgasmic and being orgasmic, what is literally the, the end of, um, in this place, sympathetic contraction, a dynamic of mobilization is like dissolving into oneness and it's, and, and, and it's infinite peace. It's, it's, it's like you said, it's not even the bliss state. It's just like we drop sometimes into that place of, it's just like, it's just, you know, I, I studied this stuff with, with um, Ramana Maharashi was Advaita Vedanta and there are different descriptions about stages of of uh, Samadhi and uh, Paka Samadhi and, and, and I forgot all these terms but you know there are different and I, I've experienced some of these as, mm -hmm. as glimpses and they're absolutely it's an it's an it's an it's it's altering it's so beautiful and and you just tap into this life force grid of the earth of reproductive energy but not in form of reproducing more. It's just like, it's just, oh, I can't explain it. It's so hard to put words to that. So, Matt, you know, I studied under An Anand Garuda. Yeah. He explains orgasm as an internal explosion of energy. Mm. That's how he defines it. And it, of mm. course, can occur in a sexual state, but it can occur in any part of the body, full body, whole body, localized, yeah. Temporal. As, as an internal explosion of energy. I haven't come across a better definition. Can I explain a, a situation where uh, I can apply that to, which I have experienced? Mm -hmm. uh, it was my first Vipassana retreat many years ago, and I was sitting, I was sitting with three days with the with single, you know, just a anapana, just sitting with mm -hmm. breath. And I actually, now when you say it, I think maybe it was an orgasm, actually. I just mm -hmm. sat, and uh, it was not here. It mm -hmm. was a, a tube. I felt mm -hmm. like a tube here. And, and you know, there's a lot of pain if you sit a lot of hours. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, sort of thinking, what the fuck am I doing here? I hate this fucking shit. Mm. <laughs> but then I had, a, a, it's like a channel going from here up to here, and it just pumped this, just, it felt like a fountain of just happiness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it just pumped and pumped and pumped and pumped. And then when I went outside, it was like, I just felt part of everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and And, and I thought, well, now I know what these monks are doing. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so, so the shortcut explanation, and then we just uh, need to define that for ourselves because there is no um, definition about that. You know, it's just, uh, it's, there is no definition. An explosion is literally, it goes, and then it's over. Yeah. My experience is that when I go towards this, I actually don't go into the bang. I just I, I just stop before that one, yeah. 
and somehow this thing is washing over me and uh, relax and relax into it and then it just becomes an infinite expansion mm -hmm. and that just ends in peace and silence and and that's my experience mm -hmm. and but as is it's is so um, individual that I don't know if you experience something similar or experiencing it differently so in this path of the orgasmic blueprint the way how I describe that is you just use every thing in your capacity to go to that state where you're just literally about to explode yeah but then you let it wash over you and let it there's so much to talk about anger in this somehow <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Easier, like actually with no touch, the energetic orgasm, like with no touch, almost no touch, and then mm -hmm. going from there, and it's through breath sound and allowing the, my energy to run. Yeah. And then I go, and then I had these moments, and yes, when I then with someone who's also open, so that's how we call it, or you allowed the energy to run, and I have it at ten, at, actually at most intense, I have it on my third eye. We go together here, and just like it's just like electricity, it's like electricity. Yeah. And then this one can move better. And that is also connected to the hormones yes. you think in yes. the body. Yeah. 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 So this is from and this can go forever. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So generating and really high. Mm. And uh, this is sometimes when we allow this, to, then I need to need it to stop it because it becomes, becomes kind of painful. Yeah. Mm. But that's like on a physical level. Yeah, it starts coming there, but there's still a lot of conditioning around. Yeah, and you know, there hasn't been a master falling from the no. sky. We are all humans and we develop and dis discover. And this is where my aim is to combining all these neurological stages with physical activity and being, and you say specifically in anger, mm -hmm. and there is going into that state of really physical fucking to combining that in, in a rawness in an animalistic mm. rawness of wildness of craziness where this this beast this creature is coming through we're just looking sometimes at each other's faces ah, it gets so bizarre in there this is just like I can't even put names to this and you shave, the face shaves it. yeah and it's it's the full expression of my masculine power as ang uh, as anger but in a loving, caring way, not in a dangerous way. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's very interesting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but I just... Uh, I was very angry the other day, and I wanted to get my anger out. And I was like, can you help me? I said to Sebastian, can, you, can I get angry with you? And he's like, uh... And then, uh, and then anyway, we went through. I went. I, I got angry with him, and but I explained that I why I got angry, and that it wasn't his fault. Blah blah blah. But then it, it wasn't enough, and I was like, I wanted to fight, and I was like, Can you? Can we have like sex and fight? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So we were like struggling and like and it was like turn off, and then I was like, No, and yeah, it was like a rave and all, and it was like. And then oh. I'm like, okay, no, oh. I can cook food and can just clean the dishes. No, I'm, no, I'm done. So nice. <laughs> yeah. But the understanding is that, that anger in the not safe side is fight flight, yeah. but on the safe side is mobilization. Yeah, so and, and, uh, and release. Okay, so this is the last piece, and then uh, uh, please add that, what you want to say. No, no, no. <laughs> Can no, no, we have. Sneak out and ask my mum needs something and come back if she does. No, no, wait, 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 and then, and then you run, and, and then, because we're done. So, so there's one specific piece here. This is what I want to play and do next after we have a 50 minute break, and then we just go into that. This is what I. It's called the three minute game and the entire somatic consent engagement system, and everything that I've developed and put in that book, everything that I'm, I'm done as a map, as the blueprint, as this entire thing, just like, wow, how is it working? This is what we're doing next. And you ask for tools. This is the master tool. This is, this is fucking it. And it needed this build up till here that I can show you this fucking tool. Yes. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> it's good. Yes. And you have them on the cut. 
and, and they're on the cards on the back side. <laughs> All right, 15 minutes and then it's your turn. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome on the other side. I know the polyvagal theory can be complex and if you have any questions then please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to answer them. In the following session I will show you how the three minute game works and uh, as I've shown that in this uh, polyvagal theory description where play and the uh, three minute game fits perfectly into the nervous system into the so-called hybrid state. And this is where the three-minute game needs to be played. Enjoy that one.